Welcome to our video. Today we are going to go over how to set up your 20548 thermal printer with Zebra compatible drivers. These drivers are used for label creation software that work exclusively with Zebra drivers. Listen closely because this part is extremely important. If you've used the Zebra driver on your computer before, or if you've installed our standard 20548 printer driver before watching this, you need to uninstall those drivers or else you will run into a lot of issues that we wouldn't want you to go through. However, if this is the first thermal printer you're installing on your machine and you haven't downloaded anything yet, then you don't have to worry about this section. Skip over to the 1 minute and 55 second mark if this does not apply to you. For the rest of the people who had a Zebra printer driver installed on your machine before, or if you've attempted to download our native drivers already, keep watching and I'll walk you through how to uninstall the drivers so that you'll get a fresh start. We need to download the Zebra printer compatible driver. The download link will be in the description below. When you click on the link in the description titled Zebra Compatible Drivers, your download will begin. Once this is done downloading, go ahead and run the file. Go through the installation like so, but don't just hit next, 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 because when you get to this page, you want to select remove printer drivers, then automatically remove all drivers by Siegel. Wait for the uninstallation and then it will ask you to reboot your computer. Just make sure that you have all of your work saved and go ahead and press restart. When you get back into your computer, there is a chance that it asks you to reboot again. If it does so, go ahead and do it, but that's usually not the case. Now, you have a fresh start without any Zebra drivers or RxScan drivers, so we can go ahead and continue with the setup procedure. Let's talk about physical setup. Let's begin by loading our shipping label roll into the printer. First, position the printer so that the mouth is facing you. Open your label printer by taking both hands and positioning your fingers behind the green triangles. Pull the triangles towards you and then up. Remove the rod located in the middle of the printer like so. Remove one of the shields and place the rod through your shipping label roll. Put the shield back onto the rod so that your label roll is between them. Place it back into the shipping label printer like so. Be sure that the orientation of the roll is correct. You want the first sheet of the roll to be appearing from the top facing the mouth of the printer. Position the shipping label in the center of the rod. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can use the measurement markings on the rod for reference. Take the first sheet out of the roll and position it under and between the two green sliders. Bring the sliders closer to each other in a way in which it will secure the first sheet and the flow of the following sheets after that. You don't want to make this too tight though. Pull the first sheet from the roll until it's positioned like so. You can now close the printer and press down until it snaps into place. If you haven't done so yet, connect the power cable of your printer into an outlet. A unique feature about this printer is its label size auto detecting feature. Inside the printer is a sensor that allows it to automatically detect the size of your label. To do this, make sure your printer is turned off from the back switch. Hold the green button in the front while switching your printer on. Keep holding the green button until the light turns red. As soon as you see the light turn red, let go of the button. The printer will automatically detect the size of your label. It will use a page or two for measuring purposes. We're now ready to move on to the next step, downloading the drivers. The download link will be in the description below. When you click on the link in the description titled Zebra Compatible Drivers, your download will begin. Once that's finished, go ahead and run the installer like so. When you press finish, your browser might pop up and you can just ignore that for now or just close it all together. If nothing further shows up on your screen, you might have to click on the little shield icon on the bottom to proceed with the installation. It's going to ask if you want the program to make changes to your computer and hit yes. This page pops up. Select install printer. Now this part is very important. When it asks you to specify the printer model, you want to look for Zebra LP2844. Once you find it, click on it and double check that it's the right one before pressing next. Now it will ask you to specify the port. For now, click on any port that says USB. 
It doesn't matter for now, but we will handle this later during the configuration segment of the video. Press Next. It's going to ask you to name the printer, but you just want to leave that alone. The default name is Zebra LP2844 and that's what you want to keep it as. Press Next, then Finish. Then Close. Now we're ready to move on with the configuration of your printer. Go to Printers and Scanners menu by typing in the Start menu Printer and then selecting Printers and Scanners. There, find Zebra LP2844 and then press Manage, Printer Properties, and then go on over to the Ports tab. Find the port that's checked and you should see under the Printer column Zebra LP2844. What you are looking for is whether or not you have installed the printer on the same port as another printer. In my case, it says Zebra LP2844, HP LaserJet. That means we currently have two printers assigned to the same port. If we keep it like this, most likely we will face a lot of issues. So what I'm going to do is check off the USB port with an empty printer column. Just make sure it's USB and not COM3, COM4, etc. So when you check the empty USB port, press apply and your printer will switch over to the one that we select. And you can see it's on its own now without HP LaserJet next to it which is what we want. Then head on over to the General tab. Go to Preferences, then go to Page Setup and set your label size. The standard shipping label size is 4x6 and that's also the size of my label so I'm going to set it to 4x6. Then go to Graphics tab and make sure dithering is none. Head on over to Options and where it says Use Current Printer Settings, uncheck that and turn the darkness all the way up to the highest which should be 15. Press Apply and then OK. The Preferences menu should disappear and press Print a Test Page to see that everything is in working order. If you'd like to test a sample shipping label, in the description I have a download link to a sample shipping label. You can also find this in the 2054A product page in the download tab in case you want to do more tests. If you're using Chrome, when you click on the link to open the PDF, it will appear like so. Click on the printer icon on the top right hand side and make sure that destination is set to the thermal label printer. Paper size is 4x6 or whatever you have yours set to and scale is fit to page. Press print and you should have yourself a beautiful shipping label. Just note that the settings that we use for the sample shipping label may not apply for the other platforms where you'd be able to print directly from your browser such as ebay.com and ups.com. For those platforms, you want to head on over to our other tutorials. That about wraps it up for this setup guide, and if you are having any trouble at all or run into any issues, do not be afraid to contact us via chat on our website at arcscan.com.